Well, I don't know, mate. What's on telly? So I started asking the big questions. And over this 20 years, and I'm going to go into it all in a lot of detail today, I hope, I hope you, you're going to stick around. <laughs> it's going to be a long one. Um, and it was, it's very clear that there is a multi-leveled conspiracy, and I'll go through the multi-levels through the day, to enslave humanity. Some of it we see with men in dark suits, the, most of it, like an iceberg, we don't see, because the men in dark suits are merely the outer expression of this conspiracy, the real controllers and orchestrators you never see. But crucially, and I've seen this in the last six, seven years where I've really focused on this, we cannot possibly understand this world if we don't understand where are we, who are we, and all these questions here. What is reality? What is life? Only when we get some kind of fix on that does this world suddenly make sense. And when you ask those questions and you pursue them, you find that this world that we think is so real and so solid is just an illusion. The physical world is an illusion. It's not physical at all. It just seems to be. Get into why in this first part. Now if you're a few behind the people, behind the people, behind the people, and you know that this world is an illusion, and you know how we generate it, and we, you know how people can be manipulated to generate a reality or a sense of reality that suits your agenda, you are in a massive position of power over vast numbers of people who don't know that. Why? Because no one tells them. Because the education system and the media and science is all there to stop them finding out. This is a great line from a great American comedian, Bill Hicks, who died in the 1990s, the age of, I think it was 33. All matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration. We're all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There's no such thing as death. Life is only a dream. And we are the imagination of ourselves. The bottom line of this conspiracy below all the other stuff, banking scams, engineered wars and stuff, is the manipulation of humanity's imagination of itself. The false identity. So, we are in a world that is illusory in the way we perceive it. How that is, I'll get into. But you've only got to look on some basic levels to see how we see what the brain decides we should see as it decodes the information it receives. This is a man, where you come across him, there's loads of his pictures on the internet now. He draws um, chalk pictures on the flat pavement. What you're looking at with that big butterfly, that is actually done on a flat pavement. But because of the way it is done, the brain reads it as a three-dimensional form. It's not, but the brain reads it that way. Same with that. Same with that. Same with that. All these are just flat pictures. Same with that. And these optical illusions are just manipulating the brain to read reality in a way that it reads something that's not really there. Now, when you take that into much, much deeper, deeper, deeper levels, but the same theme, the same principle, then you can start to see how our reality is manipulated by those who know how it works. All these are... I mean, is that a box, or is that seven uh, sections? Depends how you read it. A bird in the bush. Except that it doesn't say a bird in the bush. It says a bird in the, the bush. Why? Because the brain is used to it meaning a bird in the bush, so that's how it reads reality. We miss so much that is there because the brain doesn't read it. That's a tree. But this tree are full of faces. All over the place are faces. Subliminals. And we, again, that's another way that we're manipulated because the, the, the mind takes in everything, but the conscious mind only sees the tree to start with. Now, as I put the baby back, 
Everyone, I would say, everyone, the first thing you will see when you see this um, image now will be the baby. Because what has been unconscious has been brought to the conscious mind, now you can see it. The idea of the conspiracy is to hold as much information as possible at the subconscious level, so it's affecting us, but we're not actually seeing it because our conscious mind is not um, at that level of perception. As um, Einstein said, reality is an illusion, albeit a persistent one. And why it's persistent, I'll come to. So, big questions to find big answers. And over the last six years in particular, the, the, the synchronicity of my life has taken me more and more, and it's still going there big time now, um, to an understanding about the fact that we live in a virtual reality universe. We call it a virtual reality game, I mean, it may be, um, but virtual reality universe. And is that too far-fetched now? Because as our technology moves on, we are starting to mirror with our technology the very reality that we're experiencing. I mean, this is virtual reality and they're getting better and better and better and better. Um, and projecting forward, it, we will be able to produce eventually something as real as this world we perceive now. When you look at this, this um, it's a real face next to a virtual reality face. I mean, even at the level now, which is way back from possibility, we're seeing this. We're having virtual reality training, virtual reality uh, flying. And, and these, uh, in these ho some of these hospitals, they're putting uh, the goggles on to give virtual reality uh, experiences of things that are very cold to people who are having burns treated because it affects the body in a way that keeps it cooler than it would normally be. Because it's tricking the brain, it's tricking the brain. And what do you do with these virtual reality games, these real, um, you know, major ones? You wear gloves, why? Because they connect to the senses of touch, feel. You wear the goggles, why? Because that's the sense of, sa of sight, etc. What they're doing is just accessing the five senses, very appropriately, to create a, sens a sensation of virtual reality. Well, that's what we do. That's what we're doing now. The five senses don't need gloves and goggles from a game because they're doing it anyway. The game just short circuit, short circuits what's normally happening and gives it a f another false reality called the computer game. But sight, touch, taste, hearing, smell, they only exist in the brain. The five senses take vibrational information, classic is the ear, but they all do. They turn that, into, uh, that information into electrical information, same stuff, different form, and they send it to the brain. And the brain then constructs this physical world, which is not physical at all, this physical world we think is out here only exists in our constructed reality. And that's why the manipulators are very happy for us to think that we can find answers to problems out there because there is no out there and they know we'll never find answers to problems out there. They have to be from in here because that's where it's all being constructed. So they said in the matrix in that interchange, this isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Yes, that's all it is. <clears throat> this world exists when we decode it from vibrational and electrical into apparently physical. And we do this decoding within a tiny frequency range. We call this the world, oh it's a big world. Well, it may look a big world, but actually it's a tiny frequency range. Of the mass matter that scientists, even mainstream scientists, and they'll find there's a lot more, mind, um, say exist in this universe now, the electromagnetic spectrum is 0.005%. 
of what they say exists, dark matter, all that stuff. Visible light, which is the only frequency range that our eyes to decode and send information to the brain from, is a fraction of the 0.005%. We're basically blind to what exists in the space that we are experiencing. It's just a tiny frequency range. And the lack of knowledge of this, the identification with the vehicle that decodes that frequency range and constructs our reality, the identification with that being us has put us in the boxes that we live in. Who are we? Well, we're supposed to be humans, but we're not. That's an experience. It's not a me, it's not an I, it's not an us. It's an experience. It's basically a software program, as I'll get to. We are consciousness having that experience. But what the manipulators have done, but since they hijack this reality or this part of it, is to convince us that we are our experience. Imagine being on the uh, on the moon and 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 someone goes gets onto Houston and says, "Hey, Houston, we got a problem." Joe thinks he's his spacesuit. Joe thinks he's his spacesuit. What's he talking about? Of course he's not. He's the one inside it. Humanity thinks it's its spacesuit. And we're encouraged to believe that from cradle to grave. We are multi-level consciousness, multi-level awareness. On some levels it can be filmed now, the energy, the auric field. This is my mother. Um, she died a few years ago. And I had an experience on the day that she was uh, buried um, or cremated that um, really hit me um, and allowed me to see the difference between the body and who we are. Um, I was asked if I wanted to go to the funeral parlor on the morning of the funeral by my brother and see my mother in the open coffin. And I said, you know, no, I, I normally, I, instantly, no, I remember as she was. She's gone now anyway. Uh, but something said to me, go, go. So I said yes for the first time ever. And I went along and I walked in this room and there was my mother in a, um, in a coffin and she was so dead it was unbelievable. I, I know it's an obvious thing to say but I was taken aback. I've never seen anything as lifeless as that body and it was stone cold. Right next to it um, on a chair my brother had put, got this big blown up photograph of my mother which was going to be used at the funeral. So I'm standing there in this room there's my mother's body, dead, unbelievably so. There is my mother's picture, and that was alive. That was alive. The energy, the sparkle in the eyes, life, life force. That is who we are. And that's what had left my mother, that's what leaves when we all so-called die. And therefore the body, the computer system, just loses its life force. That's why it's so dead. Near-death experiences um, galore, and, and people have had them. Millions of them have told the story of leaving the body, often going down a tunnel, and, 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 and meeting beings or people who've gone before them and stuff like that. And this is what one of them said, a near-death experiencer. Everything from the beginning, my birth, my ancestors, my children, my wife, everything comes together simultaneously. I saw everything about me and about everyone who was around me. I saw everything they were thinking now, what they thought then, what was happening before, what was happening now. There is no time, there is no sequence of events, no such thing as limitation, of distance, of period, of time, of place. I could be anywhere I wanted to be simultaneously. That is who we are. That is what is having the experience that thinks it's Ethel Flippin Jones. So we are experiencing through the body and we are energy, consciousness, having that experience. As Einstein said, this delusion of reality is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. 
Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. End of limitation. Something I've come to understand more and more in, in the last few years, and I'm, I'm learning more and more by the day. Consciousness, what I call the now, why I call it that, will come to. It has an experience within this realm, this reality. And if we don't hold that connection, that awareness of who we are having an experience, then we get caught in the illusion of mind. Because consciousness, in the way that I'm using these words today, consciousness and mind are not the same thing. In fact, I don't even call it mind anymore. Uh, I call it the mind. Because we talk about my mind, her mind, his mind, their mind. No, no, it's the mind. And we are uh, all different expressions of it. Because mind, that we think is us, is actually the means through which consciousness experiences this reality. Thought, it comes from mind. So much of what we call emotion comes from mind and connected levels. Consciousness is something very different. Consciousness is all possibility. It, it's all that is, has been, ever can be. It is everything and it is nothing. It, because it's all possibility. It's like an ocean constantly flowing with the freedom to go where it wants. Mind, because everything is consciousness, but there's different states of consciousness, mind is like frozen consciousness. It has great limitations, great limitations of perception. But it's a wonderful vehicle for consciousness to experience this reality unless we start falling for the idea that we are the vehicle and not um, that having the experience. And one of the key things that happens when we get caught, really caught in mind, is we get caught in what's called the intellect. And of course we live in a mind-made world because we've so much lost touch with consciousness. And therefore a mind-made world will worship mind-made creations. So what do we do? We worship and laud the intellect. Universities are not for consciousness, they are for intellect. Exams are not for consciousness, it's all knowing. It's for intellect. Oh, he's got a great mind. Oh, he's got a great intellect. Nothing wrong with intellect as long as it serves consciousness. When intellect becomes who we think we are and the arbiter of everything, then we're in bloody trouble because we live in a mind-made, intellect-made world and that's why it's a crazy world that thinks it's sane. When we open our minds, we start to unlock that density, that freeze vibration of mind that it's become then we can let consciousness in and mind can serve the experience of consciousness instead of shutting it out. So you can come into this world and experience it through mind, but you're still connected to consciousness so you haven't lost the plot. You understand what's going on. So, are we consciousness or mind? Are we all that is or are we little me? Because mind thinks little me, consciousness never thinks little me, because it knows it's all that is, has been, and ever will be. You can see mind-controlled people, mind-dominated people, just by their behavior. Uh, do they have secular behavior, where they just keep going around like a computer disk in their everyday lives? If they do, then mind's in control, because consciousness doesn't do that. This is a guy called, I went to where this guy used to be actually, I was in India just before Christmas, Ramana Maharshi, he, he used to meditate, don't recommend it, everyone to their own, it's not for me, but it was his choice, good luck to him. He meditated deeply on a mountain, um, a place called Arunachala in um, India for like decades 
And uh, he said this, mind is consciousness which is put on limitations. You are originally unlimited and perfect, later you take on imitations and become the mind. This conspiracy at the core, where they know how this works, is about putting us in mind and out of consciousness. Einstein, a human being is a part of the whole called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feeling as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical illusion of his consciousness. Mind always sees things as a part from everything else. Consciousness sees everything as connected. So it's not about just freeing ourselves from mind, uh, or, or freeing our minds rather, it's about freeing ourselves from mind or from the domination of mind. And there's another point of awareness that we have, which, which is called the heart. Of course, we think of physical hearts and pumping blood around. I'm talking about um, energetic heart centers, what the uh, Sanskrit uh, people, uh, speaking people, and, and so many people today uh, know as chakras or wheels of light, vortexes that connect the body to energetic um, levels and the, the heart has its own electromagnetic energy field, has its own perception. How many times do we go, what does your head tell you? What well, tells me this? What does your heart tell you? Invariably tell you something different. Because they are two completely different perspectives on reality. Heart comes from consciousness, overwhelmingly, as long as it's open to an extent. Mind comes from um, or head comes from mind. And this was a, something I came across years ago, won't go into the details, take too long, but it was a, a wonderful saying, infinite love is the only truth, everything else is illusion. Infinite love, infinite consciousness, all that is, has been, ever will be, all possibility is the only truth, everything else is the imagination of that consciousness made manifest in what we call form everything else is illusion. One of the things I said in one of my books, love is not something you're in, it's something you are. We got caught in the idea that love is something that you are in. I am in love. No, being in love is an electrochemical attraction. As people in the mind control industry or formerly have told me over the years, if you give people certain substances, you can make them unbelievably attracted to each other as if they are uh, completely and utterly in love and obsessed with each other. But it's just an electrochemical manipulation, an attraction. Love on the level that I'm talking about that comes from the real heart center is love for all 